yang biri bawa mayam pun mampu ikai kumda jadi ngasi mayang ya faham dah video masa ama pura lai cina mayam. We are caught in this blame game of the community each other. What you see in Manipur is nothing but statelessness. It's a Hobbesian world. It is not the state institutions which is securing your life, which is supposed to be done under the constitution of the country. It is the citizens themselves trying to secure their life by arming themselves. How did this great country allow that? Have you ever asked or heard this question being raised in any of these national media? Have you? No. Rather, they have become part of the conflict. Spreading falsehood, taking sides. That's how all this great national media is doing. Defending themselves, their villages. And the media in this country of a democracy is celebrating the fact that citizens are armed and defending themselves. You think there is court, there is army, there is police, there is government, there is a prime minister, there is a CM. When the state is supposed to be there for you, when the state is nowhere, and your media is talking about it day in, day out. Which everybody is here, everybody can check. Communal violence is a cancerous element in this country right from the day one. It was born out of communal violence world partition the legacy still continues but have you ever seen muslim being shifted out from one area and ghettoized in one area hindu from one area to ghettoize on another or the sikhs from certain areas and put it somewhere or ex caste from certain locality to some other locality have you ever seen the transfer of population from one place to the another by the state have you ever seen this Why this silence? Have you ever seen in this country? Then why is that you are doing that in Manipur? What is your game plan? Is that state different? You think that the citizens of this country can be categorized based on their language, on based on their religion, their ethnicity or tribal identities? There could be categorized enclave of this population. Nobody is left alone to defend themselves. Women get raped, people get killed, their houses burn. And you said, you solve the problem, you talk to each other. Is this the way the state behave? What are we talking about? You learn in political science theories, in law, in human rights, in Supreme Court, Parliament, Assembly, Government. What are they supposed to do? They are supposed to protect your life as a citizen. Getting bias. In some sense, understandable, not justifiable. I repeat, it is understandable, but not justifiable. Why I do say that this is understandable? Because they are in that conflict situation. They are part of a conflict dynamics in that state. So if the local media somehow gets bias, for instance, which I am doing it with a team of my uh, researchers, you will see some other things as well. But what will you explain the national media who's sitting in Delhi, in Chennai, what stake do they have to be part of the conflict, to be biased? I can understand cookies or mites or the newspaper in Manipur getting twisted and influenced by what has gone, been going on there and not able to stick to strictly speaking certain objective style of reporting and so on. One might be able to understand that. But again, not justifiable. But please tell me, how will you explain national media and national body like Editor Guild of India producing twisted reports, factually incorrect, which everybody is here, everybody can check. Your life, rehabilitation, even citizens are pulling in money to help them. How many of you know this, especially from Manipur? Some of you must have contributed your monies and so on to help those citizens. Whose responsibility is this? Do we need a state or a non-state sort of a uh, state of nature? Article 355 has been imposed. And some later on then people say it is not. When the top journalist in this country is giving lectures on media saying that 355 has been imposed. And after some time you realize that it is not. 
Then you also ask, was the DCP removed by the government of Manipur or is it on the advice and instruction of the New Delhi? Do you have a clear picture on this? Who's sending these armed forces? Is it a requisition from the state government requesting the union government to send the army or the defense forces or security forces or is it the government of India who are sending these forces without those advice? Have we asked this question ever? We don't. We don't know. The Home Minister says on the floor of the parliament that the CM is cooperating. What does that mean? Jo kahega, wo karega. Wohi cooperation hota hai, kene? So who's calling the shot? Is it our own representative who's who swear by Indian constitution as MLAs and ministers? Are they in charge of it? Or is it New Delhi in charge of it? Or is there a jugalbandi between these two and creating a confusion so that this violence can continue? Do we ask these questions? No, you are very good at blaming Biden, Manipur government, you are interested, Maitai government, Biden, and you become a target without even clarifying these issues whether he is actually in charge of the state of Manipur or not. On the other hand, are you able to blame the government of India? No, because there is a facade of a government there, so they will say that this is the state government. We are caught, not only in violence, but in these confusions. Saying something, doing something else, and we keep on waiting. And then you say, solve the problem yourself. Is it my duty to solve this violence as a citizen? If my life is threatened, whose responsibility is to protect my life? You tell me. You're all university students and faculty members. Under Article 12, if you remember that Indian Constitution's chapters on fundamental rights, it was defined vis-a-vis -vis the state. That is why it starts with Article 12, which defines what is state. It is the legislative assemblies and the parliament and the state government as well as the union government and executive. These are what is defined as the state. You're supposed to protect your life, your property, your dignity, your well-being. That is state's responsibility. That is why the state exists. In your theory, you must have learned on social contract theory. State of nature, everybody fighting against each other and then through contract, you have the state. That's the state's responsibility. When a criminal has attacked you, it is the law enforcing agencies who are supposed to help you out and get justice. What, ha what has been happening in Manu for the last four months? Everybody is being left alone to defend themselves. There is no state. It is the villages. You can see any damn newspapers and media houses in this country flagging these facts that there are village guards defending their villages. Is this state forces? Are these state agencies or civilians or the non-state actors? So the state has collapsed. There is no state. Everybody is left alone to defend themselves. Women get raped. People get killed, their houses burn. And they said, you solve the problem. You talk to each other. Say that Sri Virin Singh and the government of Manipur is in charge of the law and order situation in Manipur. Charge. Is it CM Virin who is in charge of the, pro of the state of Manipur? Is it the government of Manipur? Or is it the government of India? Who is in charge of Manipur? State. Everybody is left alone to defend themselves. Women get raped. People get killed, their houses burn. And they said, you solve the problem. You talk to each other. If my life is threatened, whose responsibility is to protect my life? Is it anti-national to ask this question? Is it a rightful question that a citizen, thinking citizen, must be asking this? The Indian state, the one of the most powerful state in the world, has it been able to stop the violence? Yes or no? Louder. Is it a fact or fiction? This is a fact that the Indian state has failed to stop the violence. These two facts must be kept in front of us. And then ask the remaining questions. Why, what, wherefore of these two facts? Why this violence has continued for so long? 
what is this nature of this violence when it started why it has not been able to be sort of stopped these are the questions that you must ask then i must also share you the second set of empirical facts there are a lot of what bhagat has called it competing narratives there is a lot of confusions and silences unexpected ones from the day one if you flick through it some people say for example you ask a very pure question who is in charge of manipur's law and order problem who is in charge is it cm biren who is in charge of the prop of the state of manipur is it the government of manipur or is it the government of india who is in charge of manipur do we have a clear answer on this is it anti national to ask this question is it a rightful question that a citizens thinking citizen must be asking this begin asking this question is too much for months look at those people i have seen one guy who is talking from a relief camp it hits here he says he wants to commit suicide you and i can go back after this meeting and sleep in a proper place we will not miss our dinners there are thousands of them 60 70000 people without homes in manipur now